Okay, I feel like that was good. This is gonna be a problem today. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about Ghosts of the Abyss. Ghosts of the Abyss is a 2003 theatrical release. It is directed by James Cameron, cinematography by Vince Pace, and editing is done by Ed W. Marsh, Sven Papp, John Rafua, and David C. Cook, and the music is by Joel McNeely. This is a documentary, so there isn't really a writer. The writers are t in documentaries typically the director and the editor, because you find the story in the edit. I would also say, given the fact that this documentary is about the Titanic, it doesn't actually like super star anyone in particular, but the two bigger stars in this film are James Cameron and Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton does most of the narration, if not all of it. The film had a $13 million budget, made $28.7 million in the box office. It's got an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it was very well received. People said it had awe-inspiring imagery. I did a whole section right here where I talked about the Titanic and the history of the Titanic, but for some reason I super fumbled it. It's like not good. So I'm just going to quick tell you the RMS Titanic was a passenger liner for White Star Line, which sunk on her maiden voyage on April 15th, 1912. It had 2,224 passengers or people on board, and they lost 1,500 of them. Only 710 were saved. Uh, three hours after it hit an iceberg on its starboard side, it did split in half. Um, it buckled inward five of the watertight compartments. It could withstand four being buckled or being water, water logged, but a fifth did crack open and then that tipped over into the sixth, which doomed the ship at three hours after it hit the iceberg. It did famously crack in half and then it foundered, um, and only 710 people were saved by the, um, Carpathia like three hours later. It also had a lot of eerie things about it, like Thomas Andrews, the guy who helped design the ship, said not even God can sink the ship. And then there were only 20 lifeboats on board when it could hold 48, and not all those lifeboats were filled to the brim like they could have been. The wreck was discovered in 1985 by a Franco-American expedition sponsored by the Navy, and it obviously continues to gradually deteriorate as it's down at the bottom of the sea. Um, and it is the second most, uh, it's the second largest uh, ocean liner wreck in the world. Um, only succeeded, I guess would be the word, by the HMHS Britannic. This was absolutely captivating. I was just like primed and ready to watch this. I think I was really excited to watch like a documentary about a subject that I was interested in watching a documentary on in the midst of all these animated sequels and directed video releases and all that. I was just like excited to watch a documentary. It's been a really long time since we got to watch a documentary. I think the last one was Frank and Ollie. So I was super excited to like jump back into a documentary, which is funny because sometimes I'm not about the documentaries, but this was captivating. I think James Cameron did a great job on the expedition and then also um, stitching this movie into something that by the end of it, I was like at the edge of my seat <laughs> um, because I got to learn some stuff about the Titanic that I didn't get to learn before, even though I knew a good chunk of it. Um, but it was, amazing obviously to see the Titanic but I think James Cameron really did a great job not only take taking this expedition to s and building the technology to be able to see inside the Titanic um, at the bottom of the ocean but also I think he did a great job um, then later stitching this documentary together and giving us a little bit of a moment at the end there where it's just like you're at the edge of your seat you're captivated um, so he just did a fantastic job, which is not surprising, it's James Cameron. Obviously the critics said awe-inspiring imagery and I would kind of have to agree. Um, the entire way they technically tackled getting film of the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean where there is no light was fascinating. I thought that was such an interesting part of the documentary. It was the fact that like, they didn't super go into the detail, but they talked about how they were gonna try and light the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean so they could see it better than with just a spotlight. 
you know um they had this whole like chandelier thing that they dropped down to hover above the titanic so they could film it with a little bit more like better lighting than just like some spotlight from the camera you're filming with uh, and how they talked about maneuvering their ships so they're not blinding the other's camera. They like always were trying to be like this. And it like, I really was kind of geeking out about them talking about the lighting. There were quite a few things that I thought potential, I mean, obviously they did like, you know, VFX to recreate things and all that kind of stuff. But the shots of Bill Paxton and his um, sub pilot through the, the little windows in their sh submarine ship, I don't know. Um, I was like confident had to have been recreated because I was like, what camera is filming them <laughs> in there from the outside, you know? But then as they talked about like making sure you had eyes on this, this ship and making sure you had eyes on this ship and all that kind of stuff, I started to think maybe it wasn't recreated, but I don't know. Part of me still thinks it might've been a little bit recreated for some movie magic, but there were also definitely shots of like inside the little sub ships that were 100% filmed in the moment because they're like little GoPro mounted moments and they definitely have their coverage covered but I don't know the shots through the like little view holes in the sub ship thingies I super felt like they had to be recreated for me but if they weren't I am actually blown away by the amount of coverage they got while they're at the bottom of the ocean and I'm like how many cameras did you have down there that's insane it had to be so, I mean, it's already an amazing feat, but to have like cameras on Bill Paxton through a porthole on Bill Paxton and his shipmate inside the subs on James Cameron and through their porthole and then, you know, on each other's ships and then on the Titanic and then like in the Titanic is just, um, it's incredible technically speaking cinematography wise and then it's beautiful. The, the film they got of the outside of the Titanic is absolutely breathtaking and stunning. Um, the very first reveal of the Titanic, I got goosebumps. It was incredible. The edit, which goes hand in hand with the writing and the directing at this point, because it's a documentary, was so well done because there's an entire sequence toward the end. They've been using these two ROVs, which they were green and blue, to go inside the Titanic. So this was like the first expedition where they could, they had the technology to go inside the wreckage of the Titanic. Um, and they called them, the blue one was Jake and the green one was Elwood. And they've been taking them inside the Titanic to see all these beautiful things, perfectly preserved china, perfectly preserved glass pitchers, perfectly preserved medicine bottles, like perfectly preserved things, forks, just the most, the staircases, the, the A deck and B deck signs and the thing that said elevator. And just like, there was so much stuff that was still like so preserved perfectly. And then obviously the ship itself has become like a breeding ground for all these interesting creatures and all that kind of stuff. But they've been taking Jake and Elwood into the Titanic day after day, like deciding, you know, they have little maps of the Titanic, where they're going to go, what they're going to do, how they're orienting, orient, orientating themselves. And then tragedy strikes when they lose Elwood, the battery dies and they have no control over Elwood. And they go on this quest to try and save Elwood because obviously like, you don't want to lose that piece of technology you basically created to try and do this. And also then that her harms the like trying to get the images of the Titanic and it's just insane. And so they take Jake and they try to attach a weight to Elwood. And this is like for the end of the movie, you're at the edge of your seat. You're like, no, no, they can't lose it, they can't lose it. And so <laughs> they attach a weight to Elwood to bring him down. And when they turn Jake around to push him back a little bit so then Elwood can fall, they lose Jake. And Jake was in an area where he's just gonna float all the way up and you're just gonna say bye bye, Jake. But then the, the tether that had broken comes by their ship and they use a little arm thing to rotate and pull Jake back. And they save Jake and they fix Jake and then they take Jake back down to try and save Elwood again. And Elwood has the weight on him. So they're trying to attach a fish hook to Elwood and they try and they don't get the fish hook in and they knock the weight off. So Elwood's floating again, but they're able to get the fish hook in and then they're driving Jake and Elwood out. And they get stuck on something, and they're thinking they're gonna lose both of them again, but then finally they broke free, and then they have to end Elwood, and it was so intense, so crazy. You're like hoping, hoping, hoping. There's multiple moments where you're like, oh my god, they're never gonna get them back. Like that's it. That's the end of their expedition. They can't do anymore. And then, like, then a win would happen because of God. Then another thing would happen. Like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Are they gonna get them back? Like, I was at the edge of my seat over Jake and Elwood, these two little ROV camera things. It was hilarious. And they win. They get them back. And the guy in um, one of the subs, just like because they spent all day trying to save these cameras, it took them 35 minutes just to wound Jake and or whatever. Goes, oh my god. And if you can believe it, 6:15 in the dates. What is it? September 11, 2001. 
When I tell you I gasped, <laughs> the reveal of the fact they were down there trying to save these two cameras while 9-11 was happening was insane. So they come up, they've had a super triumphant day. They've saved both Jake and Elwood. And the second they get off these submarines, Bill Paxton is like the worst terrorist attack, 9-11, like, like, you know, the towers, the Pentagon, like, they get all this information and they're like, well, everything we just did, like, feels so trivial now. Like, we were down there and had no idea what was going on here. And it just, like, oh my God, that reveal was so incredible. Like, obviously, 9-11 was so sad, so it was Titanic, all sad. But like, just the reveal of it was so well done. Like, I actually gasped. So the edit, incredible. The score was actually fantastic. I really enjoyed the score for this. There were multiple moments that Joel McNeely kind of had a very like eerie, creepy um, vibe going on, which like would get to me sometimes, depending on what we were looking at on the Titanic. I was like, ooh, I'm scared. Um, the songs that had words, <laughs> this is like a trend recently. Um, not my favorite. The one at the end was not bad. I didn't hate the one that finished off the movie. The one at the very beginning, I hated it. It was terrible. I was like, oh no, why are we doing this? No, absolutely not. Um, so, But the score itself was really great. Joel McNeely did a great job. Something that I was not like ever expecting to see and I have no idea how they got it was as they were planning their expedition, they had a model of the Titanic wreck. Like they had a little model of the Titanic wreck and they're like, this is how we're gonna cover that. Like they were planning how they were gonna cover stuff. And I was not expecting that. I thought having that model was amazing. Whoever made the model, kudos to you. That was so cool. Um, and then another thing that was crazy is, I haven't mentioned it yet, I don't think, but they were 12,500 feet under the surface, okay? So the bottom of the Atlantic, right where the Titanic is, 12,500 feet. That's far. Um, what I was kind of mad about though, is they never said specifically how long it takes to go from the surface to 12,500 feet. At the very beginning when they're doing it for the first time, it felt like it was probably a long time, but obviously I have no idea how long it takes them to get down there. Is it 10 minutes? Is it two hours? Is it, I have no idea how long it takes them to get down um, to the Titanic. So it was kind of, I was a little frustrated that they didn't mention how long it takes. Like I would have been so curious to know because the first time you go down, they left right in the morning and then when they came back, it was night. And I was like, okay, that makes sense that they spend all day down there. Totally try to make the best of your time or the most of your time or whatever. But I was kind of like, how long does it take them to go down? And how long does it take them to come up? Is it faster to come up? Cause it's like natural or are they being crushed? Is it harder to come up? Like, I have no idea. I'm so curious. I want to know. Bill Paxton, his first time in the sub, asking all the safety questions <laughs> was hilarious. And then when the guy, you know, he was like, I've heard in extreme scenarios, we might have to ditch the battery to help us like load up or whatever. And the dude driving was like, oh, there's a lot of possibilities, but I prefer not to ditch the battery because it's so expensive. <laughs> Bill Paxton was like, how much? And the dude said like $250,000. And Bill Paxton said, would you take a check? And that took me out. That was so funny. Um, I know I mentioned that I got goosebumps at the reveal of, of the Titanic, but I truly did get goosebumps at the reveal of the Titanic. But what I loved is when they found it, James Cameron said, um, there it is, you can't miss it on the sonar, look at this. And then you look and you can just like, the this like temperature signature, like you just see black and then all of a sudden there's just like this red, yellow, purple, like of a point of a boat that is the Titanic ship, excuse me. Um, and that was like, oh, the music with it, the reveal of them first coming up to it was so good. I was like, oh, 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 I got this one, I got this one. And then what I thought was fun was they discovered that the gangway entrances on the inside had wrought iron gates and no one knew that um, until this expedition where they got to go inside the Titanic and they found the gangway and they saw it had wrought iron gates in front of the doors. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. And then obviously I've already mentioned all the stuff they found that was perfectly preserved, um, which was just crazy. And then just the different things they could see. And you know, basically they'd be like, oh, this is where this was. And then they'd tell a story from like a testimony of someone about what happened or why it was like that or what was going on. And you know, like they kept talking about how like, you know, you expect it, like you have an idea of how big it's gonna be. And then you get up to it and you're like, yo, it's so much bigger than you thought it was gonna be, like the engines and the boiler rooms. And it was just so fascinating to watch all of it. And then to see also all the fish that like 
science still doesn't know or have a name for because we've only seen brief images in like this expedition down to the Titanic. They even said there were fish in the Titanic that weren't like outside around the Titanic. So it was like specifically native to the Titanic and there's bacteria that's eating away the Titanic. And James Cameron even said, you know, five years ago, we couldn't do this expedition because we didn't have the technology. And now we do, we had to will it into existence. And if we wait another five years, the Titanic might not be there. It's getting eaten away so much. So that made me super curious as to what the Titanic looks like now. I wonder what it looks like now. It's been, let's see, 1915, it's been over a hundred years at this point. Is it gone? Is it like barely there? Like what? I mean, it's probably not gone, it's pretty big. But like how much more has it deteriorated? I say petition for another expedition to the Titanic. Um, but anyway, I've pretty much gone over all the other things like the ROV recovery and the 9-11 reveal was all so good. But I will just say like, I enjoyed this from beginning to end. I thought this was like really interesting. Um, and I definitely would recommend giving it a watch. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a informative and also um, like a little bit of a, an emotional documentary. Um, just with, you know, learning different testimonies and what happened and all the circumstances that led to it and it was good. That's everything I have for Ghosts of the Abyss. By all means, give it a watch. Let me know what you think. Um, my final rating is eight ships out of ten. No, eight submarines out of ten. Our total movie count is... Paradise Greg not much the same. If you want to keep up with the movie watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll find out what movie watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon, buy merch. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so you do, and uh I don't know, like learn more. Let's let's all try to learn more today. Something I learned yesterday from a coworker. John Williams' son is the lead singer of the band Toto. Yeah, that's right. Coworker told me that. I think it's fascinating. Love that for them. <laughs>